Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. All right, we are working out of the Spiritual Warfare Bible, and yes, I highly recommend all believers to get this Bible. It is a must-have, okay? It is a must-have in your walk with Christ, dealing with this spiritual war that we're in that we cannot see, right? How can you fight something that you can't see that's in the spirit? This will help you tremendously. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, all right? But anyway, our spiritual warfare basic today is going to be dealing with strongholds, strongholds. I was sitting here doing some reading and of course the Holy Spirit said, if you don't get on and film, so here I am. And we're going to be dealing with the 12 root strongholds. So we're going to go over these two pages and then that will be it. Just a quick nugget. Okay. Just a quick nugget. So if you do have the book, you can find this on page 1374. 1374. All right. Is the page number that this is on if you have the book. So let's jump on in spiritual warfare basic here we go strongholds it says paul speaks of our warfare and satanic attacks on believers in second corinthians 10 3 and 4 using the term stronghold so let's just read that scripture real quick since it's on the same page and here's 10 and it said 3 and 4 so 3 starts right here can you see and it says for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All right. So there we go. So let's get into this. So it says, <clears throat> excuse me, it says using the term stronghold, the Greek word means fortress. Strongholds are the way the enemy gains access and control in a Christian's life. A stronghold is a fortress of wrong thinking that can harbor a demonic entity. Entity, my Lord. Ooh. This demonic entity can launch attacks from the house our wrong thinking has constructed for him. Mm. Yes, indeed, we can actually put a gun in the enemy's hand for him to shoot us. Habits and addictions many times are simply demonically infested strongholds. This is not a demon possession, but demon infestation. Christians can be oppressed, depressed, tempted, harassed, and buffeted, but they cannot be possessed. Though believers can never be totally overtaken by Satan and his demons, the sad reality is that many are harassed constantly by wicked forces. Whenever the flesh is in control, come on now, that's the key word. Whenever the flesh is in control of a Christian's life, guess what? Demons are given a place in the believer's mind. That's why we should always be walking in the spirit, somebody. This place is usually an un unconfessed sin. That's why you need to be in a state of repentance and confessing your sin, my Lord. An unbroken bad habit or something that you obsess over or a wrong attitude. Simply stated, the believer has embraced a lie. Second Corinthians 10.5 says, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The battle rages in the thinking process of a believer. These wrong ideas, bad attitudes, false assumptions, wrong traditions, and lies can become a what? Doorway Ooh, or a portal for demons into our lives. My Lord, my Lord, and my God. Woo! 
Okay, now we know what a stronghold, how stronghold is. So let's go on over to see what the 12 root strongholds are. Okay, and this is on page, what is this page? Just two pages over. This is on page 1378. 1378, okay, for the 12 root strongholds. So let's go. Lord, have mercy. Ooh. All right, here we go. Number one stronghold, the spirit of infirmity. Mm, mm, mm. Affected a believer woman in the New Testament in Luke 13 and 11. And every, every scripture that I list here, somebody, not somebody, y'all <laughs> should be writing them down and then go back and read that story so you can recognize these demonic attacks or these strongholds, okay? So it's going to be a scripture in every single one, I believe. Write them, make sure you write these down and go read it. Go read it. I don't, this is supposed to be a nugget. It ain't supposed to be long, so I'm not going to read it, but that's for you, okay? I mean, I'm going to read it on my own, but not with y'all. All right, here we go. Let me start over. The spirit of infirmity, that's number one, affected a believer woman in the New Testament, Luke 13, 11. Write that down. This woman was a faithful attendee of the synagogue. She was a daughter of Abraham, yet demons affected her health. Some examples are disorders of the body, attacks on male and female identity, allergies, and strong and strange syndromes. So all those different types of syndromes, whew, okay, that's good to know. Spirit of infirmity, number two, the spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, write that down. Examples include fright, torment, inferiority, inadequacy, worry, critical spirit, tension, performance, and the fear of anything. Ooh, okay. Three. The spirit of phantom, also called divination. You can find this in Acts 16, verses 16 through 18. Write that down. And this consists of what? Rebellion, witchcraft, occult practices, and art and dark arts flow from the spirit. Curses follow involvement with these practices. And we know that because we've been working in the book Blessings and Curses, right? Rebellion is as rich crash. If you're not following God's word, you're in rebellion. Therefore, you open up the door to a curse by default, automatically, right? My Lord, here we go. Number four, the spirit of sexual immorality. immorality. And, we, and again, these are the strongholds. These are strongholds that's on people. And it says, called harlotry or whoredoms, Hosea 4 and 12. Write that down. Lust adultery, pornography, rape, incest, pride, and love of the world are characteristics of this demon, my Lord. Sexual addiction is also a result of this perverted spirit. Mm, mm, mm. Number five, an enslaving spirit that usually accompanies fear. You can find this in Romans 8 and 15. Write that down. Addiction, bulimia, anorexia, wrong relationships, codependency, and other obsessive disorders are worsened by this demon. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go. Number six, the spirit of pride. That normally is accompanied by rebellion. You can find that in Proverbs 16, 18, 18 through 19. Write that down. Pride, scorn, mockery, lewdness, egotism, prejudice, arrogance, gossip, and criticism manifest from this wicked spirit. Mm, mm, mm. The spirit of perversion, number seven. You can find this in Isaiah 19, 14. Write that down. Homosexuality, sexual perversion, and abnormal activities are incited by this spirit. Mm, mm, mm. Number eight. The spirit of Antichrist. You can find this in 1 John 4 and 3. Write that down. This demon takes glory away from Christ, denies the supernatural gifts, attributing them to Satan, opposes, harasses, persecutes, and divides true ministries. Mm, mm, mm. Number nine, the spirit of depression or heaviness. 
excuse me, you can find this in Isaiah 61 and 3. Depression, abnormal grief, despair, hopelessness, and suicidal thoughts flow, flow from this malviolent demon. Mm, mm, mm. Number 10, the lying spirit. One of Satan's favorite tools. You can find this is 1 John 4 and 6. Write it down. Unbelief, deception, compromise, intellectualism, cults, flattery, and legalism flow from this decisive spirit. And 11, it says the spirit of jealousy, a relationship destroying spirit. Whew. Find that in Numbers 5 and 14. Write it down. Jealousy, anger, rage, cruelty, suspicion, unnatural competition, insecurity, divorce, and division are all the results of allowing this spirit to operate. Ooh-wee! All right, we on the, we on the 12th one. Can y'all see? Okay. It's, and it said it is the spirit of stupor or slumber. You can find this in Romans 11 and 8. Write it down. Constant fatigue, passivity, feeling like a wallflower, and self-pity describes this demon. When allowed to control, this spirit blocks success and brings weariness to life. Mm, mm, mm. In order to take down these strongholds of Satan, you must become an armed believer. Revelations 12 and 11, write that down, declares our threefold weapon to overcome our enemy. They overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Number one, the blood does what? Cancel Satan right to oppress you. Number two, the word of your testimony. Yes, take the word of God as a sword and release it out of your mouth against the enemy. The truth will set you free. Woo, I'm loving that. Number three, a surrendered life to Jesus. You can appropriate all Jesus weaponry and you must capture every thought of the enemy and cast it down. Take authority over that thing. You hear me? Take authority over them thoughts that's exalting itself. If it ain't lining up with the word, shut it down. Shut it down and stop believing that lie. Shut it down and stop believing the lie. Okay. Y'all, you know I be getting fired up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I be getting caught up. Okay, here we go. We see the atoning blood, the witness of the armed believer, and the life abandoned to the will of Jesus. Satan trembles before the believer with God's weapons. Let me share eight steps to the removal of a stronghold. Let's get it. Y'all ready? I am. Okay, let's go. Number one, be sure you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Number two, realize only God can remove a stronghold. Ooh. Number three, identify the stronghold. And you got to do this specifically. You have to know the name. If it's a lion spirit, is it a fornicating spirit? Is it a spirit of perversion? Is it a spirit of control? Is it a spirit of envy, jealousy? You have to call that spirit out by name. Everything is a spirit. You hear me? When I came into that understanding, I said, no wonder he said we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against the spirit and the principalities, right? We got to recognize the spirit and then you go to war and bind, you bind and you break and you cancel, rebuke those spirits. That's how you deal with them, right? My Lord. Okay. Confess all sin. Number four says confess all sins related to the stronghold, right? You got to, if you lied, Lord, forgive me for lying. You got to say that specific sin, confess that sin because once you bring it to the light, now that it can't hide in the darkness no more where the king where the where where Satan has control in this in the kingdom of darkness. That's why you need to bring that sin to the light and speak it out of your mouth because it's no longer a secret now. Confession. Confession is so important. Okay, here we go. I, I'm oof, okay. <laughs> Let me calm down. All right, here we go. 
Okay, thank God for the forgiveness, number five. Number six, visualize the destruction. Think about what it all is going to do to you, right? Number seven, ask God to free you from the negative demonic forces associated with that stronghold. Closed mouths don't get fed. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. You keep saying it till you free. You keep saying God's word until you are free. Number eight, make restitution. All right, here we go. After these steps, you must possess the reclaimed territory. Confess that you are no longer affected by that area of stronghold and claims God's fullness. Be finished with the sins that enslaved you and fill your mind with scripture. This is how you renew your mind in order to reinforce the victory. And the more you speak the word, the more you believe the word, the more it gets written on your heart, the more you, the more likely you will not want to sin because you know that it displeases God. Get this word in your heart. Write it on your heart. Speak it out loud. When I read the Bible, I read it out loud, just like I'm doing with y'all, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So as long as I'm hearing God's word, Faith is coming, right? Repeatedly, faith is coming. That's why I like to read so many different translations. And that's just my own tactic to have faith come. So I like to read two and three times the same scripture because faith comes by hearing the word. I know y'all be like, why she got so many? Why are we doing all them translations? Even in my Bible study, I have everybody read a different translation because what faith is coming by hearing God's word. I do that on purpose. All right. So anyway. All right, y'all, that's it. Let me stop where we at. 16 minutes, that's good. That's good. So I highly recommend that you go back and re watch this again if you didn't catch all these scriptures and go look them up and read them, okay? Go look them up and read what they're saying to see if you recognize those spirits in people or even yourself because I recognize a few of these in, my, in me that I know I need to be delivered from right now. You understand me? So, yeah, self-deliverance is possible. We just got to confess it, acknowledge it, and repent. Amen. I love you all. God bless you. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you put a comment if you enjoyed this. Um, go pick this up. Go pick this up. Order it. Order this. Spiritual Warfare Bible. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.